So here's my follow-up video to the main overview for shells from Mutable Instruments. Be sure to check that out in the description and the video on my channel. Here I'll be looking at making the EQ oscillate, pinging the resonant EQ bands, FM and more modulation. I've got the Q setting here on the parametric EQ up full, and if I add a voltage offset to the QCV input, we can make this EQ band oscillate, and then I'll change the frequency. Taking that offset and splitting it with a stackable into the Q input of the second parametric EQ as well, we can get two oscillating bands and create two sine waves. Turning down the offset just below oscillation and then adding a short trigger to the audio input on shelves, we can ping the EQ and create some resonant percussive sounds. Turning down the offset we'll get a short click, but turning up the offset to create the more oscillation in these bands will get slightly longer ringing and oscillation. The higher the frequency, the stronger and longer that oscillation will ring. And fine tuning these two frequencies, it's easy to get some classic Roland TR drum machine type clav sounds. And tuning those down, we can get some percussive tom like sounds as well. The volume range on this patch is fairly wide, so just watch out with your speakers. The unit's oscillating again with the offset added to the QCV, and using a stackable I've got a feedback loop created taking my output into an RYO air attenuator, and this is controlling the feedback level sending that back into the input. The sound can get a lot more full on as you start to boost the other EQs on the unit and this is where you want to watch your ears and the volume. Adding a random LFO from Peaks to the gain of the high shelf EQ, we can create some classic glitchy sci-fi style sound. Taking out the random LFO, here's some FM on the gain of all EQ bands, and this is a sine wave signal from a Z3000 that I'm using for the FM. Taking that from the all gain input to the all frequency input, and this affects all EQ bands. And then adding in the random LFO to the high shelf CQ gain again. And then to finish off, here's the output going into a spring reverb for some classic glitchy style sound.
In this final patch I'm going to look at more modulation. I've got a bassline playing that's already quite thick and rich and the first thing that springs to mind with this sound is some typical low pass modulation from an envelope. So I'm going to add an envelope to the high shelf's frequency input and I'm going to use an RYO air attenuator to control the input level. So cut the gain on the high shelf and you can hear that modulation. So we can use the high shelf like a low pass filter. Turning that off for now, I'm going to add a resonant boost on the parametric EQ and then add my main pitch 1V per octave signal into the frequency of that band to get this to track the resonant boost along with the pitch of the bass line. I'll then add a low shelf boost and taking a clock telephone into the gain of the low shelf we'll get some nice low end pumping. I'll then add an audio rate FM signal to the frequency of the second parametric EQ and then I'm going to add my pitch sequence to the oscillator that's providing this FM signal so that that tracks a pitch sequence as well. Finally, turning back up the signal going into the high shelf on that attenuator, we've got all the modulation for this particular patch. As always, I hope that the video has been useful to highlight the features and the sounds of the module. One thing I did miss out was making the parametric EQ bands oscillate and then playing them like sine wave oscillators with a volt per octave input. This might have to be another follow up video because it works really great when you do that. Be sure to check out the other Mutable Instruments videos on my page and hit like and subscribe for more videos every week.